Welcome to the March or Die show today. Very glad to have you joining me and looking forward to what I believe is a very helpful topic, something we need to jump into, something that we need to understand. I said those words slowly for emphasis in case you were wondering. We need to understand. There's so many concepts, so many perspectives we need to get a hold of. And today we're going to talk about one of those, again, that I trust will be a help to you. It has helped me in my life to really consider this. But before we jump in there, again, I do want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for uh, watching. If you're watching over at YouTube, thank you for listening. If you are listening elsewhere, some at Mojo Five O, some to the podcast version of this show, wherever it is you are consuming this content from, thank you. I do want to ask you to do me a favor, if you wouldn't mind, wherever it is you are receiving this from, go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening on the radio, you can't really subscribe, but if you're listening to the podcast version of this from that platform, go ahead and subscribe to this show so that you know when other content comes online. And uh, I do my very best, and I don't think we've missed a week, but I do my very best to get this out to you early Saturday morning, early for me. I'm on the West Coast, maybe a little bit later if you're in a different time zone, but uh, early in the morning, Saturday, uh, this will come out, and uh, every week we have a new show coming out and often some great guests. Looking forward to some guests even that I have lined up next week, so looking forward to that. But uh, go ahead and subscribe there, and then take some time. Go over to YouTube channel. Go to YouTube. Search for my name, Jeremy Stallnecker. You'll find me there, and uh, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel if you would not mind, and uh, I ask you to do that favor for me, but I believe uh, you're also getting something out of that, a lot of great content there. And I'd love to share that with you. Hit the notification bell so that you know when this show and other uh, content comes online. And go ahead and leave me a comment. Share that out. That would be fantastic. And then finally, uh, for those of you that are interested, you can find out more about me and find all of the places that you can connect with me on social media, uh, a direct link to my YouTube channel, and all of the places that you can connect with me at jeremystallnecker.com, jeremystallnecker.com. That's my blog. I write there, I record there, uh, all of my contact information is there, and uh, I'd love for you to stop by there as well, jeremystallnecker.com. That was a lot. Hope you got all of that. If you didn't, you can rewind, go back, listen again, and uh, you'll find that. But I'm a very simple person, so if you want more information on me, just look up my name, Jeremy Stallnecker, and you'll find it. And uh, again, really thankful to have you join me today. I want to discuss something today that uh, is a truth, but it's a truth that we have to approach as almost a concept or a philosophy. I'll explain that. The power that we're going to talk about today is indeed a power. Uh, what we're going to discuss today is powerful. It can be powerful in your own life. It certainly will be powerful in the lives of others. There could be a downside to it if we're not careful, but it is indeed powerful. It will have an impact. But the reason I think we need to understand it, particularly as it applies to what we talk about on this show, uh, the principle that we need to push forward even when life is difficult, we need to understand it really as a principle for life, as a philosophy for living, if you will. Today we're going to talk about the power of influence. The power of influence. And as we begin, I, I want you to think for a second. Uh, you don't have to answer this question out loud. It might be weird if you're in your car or maybe you're running, listening to the podcast. Maybe uh, you're watching somewhere else. You don't have to answer out loud unless you just want to. But here's the question. Who are some people or who is a person that has had an influence in your life? They, by the way that they've lived, the things that they've done, perhaps something that they've said, maybe even something that they've written. A lot of authors that I've never met have had an influence on my life. Uh, whatever the case, who are some people or who is a person that has influenced your life? Think about that for a second. Now, influence is neither positive or negative. It, it, it is really uh, amoral in that sense. I don't know if that's used correctly, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's neither good or bad, but it can be good or bad. Influence by itself is not good or bad, but influence can be used to push someone the wrong direction or to push someone the right direction. So when we ask the question, who has had an influence on you? Maybe you think of someone who's had a positive influence, a teacher, 
that encouraged you to do more than you ever thought you could do. The way that they lived, they carried themselves, the things they taught, uh, the way that they encouraged, uh, that motivated you. It influenced you to do better. Maybe it was a parent or a grandparent, uh, another relative, an extended family member, maybe a neighbor or a friend, someone that influenced you in the right direction. Maybe, though, it was someone who had a negative influence on you. We talk about peer pressure when we're talking to children, when we're talking to teenagers. We like to talk about peer pressure. <laughs> uh, who you hang around is who you become. I have a friend who uses the statement, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Why? Because we know there is influence and that young people are influenceable. But even as an adult, we know there are people who influence us the wrong way. Because of the way they live and the things they do, we get the wrong idea or we're motivated in the wrong way. We end up doing the wrong thing. We're influenced. So when you think about someone who has influenced you, maybe it's a positive experience. Maybe it's a negative experience. One thing I believe we could all agree on, though, is that influence has an impact on our lives. What I'm going to talk about today specifically is not the impact of others or the influence of others on your life, but the power that you wield to influence others. Whether you've been influenced positively or negatively, you would have to conclude that people can influence you to do good or bad, to do more than you thought you could or less than you're probably capable of. Influence is powerful. It's powerful. And what you need to understand and what you need to adopt philosophically as a motivator in your own life is the fact, the truth, the reality that you have influence and therefore you're a powerful person with much to offer to those around you or potentially the ability to harm people who would otherwise do good things. Who has influenced you? Let's switch the question now and ask this question this way. Who do you influence? Who do you influence? Now let me step back for a second. In this context, in our context, on this show, we talk about moving forward when things are difficult. We're going to march or die. I explain that phrase often, but it's very, very simple. Very simple. In everyone's life, difficulty will come. Mark it down. You say, well, that's not very encouraging. I'm sorry it's not encouraging, but it's true. In every life, difficulty will come. I, I could be overly encouraging and overly hopeful and overly optimistic and say, if you do everything right, nothing bad will happen to you. But that's not true. It's a lie. And it's a lie that eventually will run into you like a bus. There are naive people who put their head in the sand that say, I'm a good person or I'm a this or I'm a that. In the Christian world, as Christians, I'm a Christian. And as Christians, there are many people who say, because I follow God, nothing bad will happen to me. Nothing difficult will come into my life. It's just not true. In fact, even the apostles who followed Jesus Christ while he was on this earth, who saw him as he was crucified, watched him as he was placed in a grave, experienced him resurrected. They saw, they observed, they witnessed the miracle, the power of who Jesus is as God. They were given the last words from Jesus to go into the world and communicate the truth of what had happened, to tell others about him. They then stood, we can find this in Acts chapter 1, they stood and watched Jesus Christ go into heaven. What a wonderful, wonderful life those men had. And then what happened? Most of them were martyred, they were killed, they were murdered because they believed that Jesus is God. So as Christians, sometimes we say, well, if I believe in God, if I'm following him, if I'm living right, if I'm doing the right thing, there will be no difficulty that comes into my life. The Apostle Peter, who history tells us was crucified upside down as a martyr for Christianity, for Jesus Christ, uh, he said in his book, in his letter found in the New Testament, that we should not be surprised when difficulty comes into our lives. In fact, it will if we follow Christ. Difficulty comes. We know that. 
The fear of that difficulty coming is a fear we need to cast aside because the trials will come. The question is not if they will come. We may ask the question, when will they come? Really, the big question, though, is this. What will you do when they come? When trials in your workplace, trials in your home life, in your relationships, trials physically, trials in your life, when those come, what are you going to do? Now, we would say there are a thousand different things we could do. I would submit, as I do every week, that there's really only two things to do. Perhaps nuances and techniques around each one of these decisions, but really there's only two things to do. When a difficulty, a trial, a trauma, an obstacle comes into your life, you can stay where you are because it's just too hard. It's overwhelming. I just can't do it. I'm exhausted. I can't go on anymore. You can stay where you are and die if that's what you want to do. Make no mistake, though. It's a decision. You can make that decision. I'm going to stay where I am and die. Or I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and march to a place where I can deal with the enemy, ultimately engage and defeat the enemy, if we're using that language, I can overcome the obstacle, I can deal with the trauma or the trial, and I can continue moving forward into the purpose for which I was created. Only two choices. Death is something we think of very physically, uh, a physical death. And many, would, uh, many might say, or many of you might say, <laughs> I would never take my life just because I confronted a difficulty. Some do. But death is so much more than just the physical lack of drawing breath into your lungs. There are a lot of people who are breathing but are dead. Emotionally, spiritually, relationally, they're dead on the inside. They're no longer pushing forward into the purpose for which they were created. They're not accomplishing. They're not developing and growing in their relationships. They exist, but because of whatever stood up in front of them, they're no longer moving forward. That's a decision you can make. A better decision, though, is to decide, even though you don't know how it's all going to turn out, to decide that you will continue one foot at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time, you will continue to move forward. Will you march or will you die? That's what we talk about on this podcast. I try to encourage you along those lines, and I believe that what we need in our society and in our culture right now are more men and women who have the grit in their souls to say things will get difficult, they are difficult, they've been difficult, but I'm not going to quit. I'm going to continue to trust God to take me to the place that He wants me to be. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now let's come back to our question. Influence and the power of influence. And the question of who it is that I can influence. How does this connect? How does this apply to an understanding of marching when it would be easier to stay where I am and die? I believe, at least in my own life, a lot of the guests that we've talked to have suggested, at least in their stories, that they felt the same way. In fact, I I will just go out on a limb and say everyone who has accomplished anything, (laughs) anyone who's accomplished anything, has had moments of doubts uh, in their life, moments of doubt, moments of uh, time where they looked at what they had and what they knew and what they believed they were capable of, and they concluded they just couldn't do it, and it didn't matter. If you're interested, uh, sometimes, sometimes go back and look at well-known authors, just about every well-known author, unless they were famous before they wrote the book, but if someone became famous or well-known because of what they've written, most likely there's a story underneath their rise to fame that goes something like this. They wrote something, they submitted it for publication, and it was rejected, and rejected again, and rejected again, and rejected again. A long list of authors who were rejected over and over and over and over again. At some point, they looked at what they had written and said, well, perhaps it doesn't matter, and even if someone published it, it may not make a difference. 
But instead of staying where they were, deciding to die, they just kept putting one foot in front of the other, and eventually they found that level of success they had worked so hard to achieve. You could talk to professional athletes, those in the business world, men and women that we look up to as very successful, and sometimes we believe that they found that success without the trial and the tribulation that we have to deal with, without the difficulty and, and without the doubt, and yet that's not true. Most of the time when people achieve something great, they've gone through long periods of time, deep and dark valleys, where they looked at what they were trying to accomplish, they looked at what they had to accomplish that thing, they looked at themselves, they looked at their past, and they said, you know what, it just doesn't matter. When we understand the power that we have, when we seek to use our lives and the actions of our lives to influence others, that power is not something that is simply applied to the others. It's something that we engage with ourselves. Often understanding the life that we live has the power to influence others is the motivation or the power in our own lives to take the next step. I have sadly had the opportunity because of the work that I'm privileged to do with veterans and service members. I've sadly heard the testimonies or the stories of family members who have lost loved ones to suicide. Something that is often said in those stories is that they did not believe that their life mattered anymore. They didn't believe uh, that they influenced anyone anymore. They thought that their life came and then it went and it had no impact on anyone else. They had no influence. And so knowing that things were hard, that the battles had come, the trials, the ob obstacles, the traumas, the, the difficulties, the world around them seemed to be falling apart. They looked at all of that. They knew how hard it would be to continue forward. And in the midst of that, they came to the conclusion that it didn't matter. That was the moment where they decided to quit. Listen to me. In many ways, if you're going to push forward when things are hard, you have to understand that there are always people watching. There are always people who are wondering what you're going to do. Why? Because they don't know what they're going to do. And they're looking for someone to show them the way. I've told this story many times, and it's so true in my life. The March or Die story, it takes us on top of a bridge in Iraq in 2003. April 1st of 2003, if you've heard the story, I'll just give you the Cliff Notes version so you don't have to hear the whole thing again. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to the first couple episodes of this podcast. I was on top of a bridge with a lot of Marines who I was responsible for. We were in a bad situation as mortar rounds fell around us and exploded. Things were happening. They were going very bad, very quickly. In that moment, a decision needed to be made to get off that kill spot, that kill zone, to move out of that zone into a place where we could deal with the enemy, and we did it. And thankfully we did, because had we not, within moments, most or all of us would have died. <laughs> I think about that in relationship to what we're talking about, the power of influence, I could have become so overwhelmed in my own mind with what was happening that I just gave up. The enemy is too big. The obstacles are too many. And it doesn't matter anyhow. What I do doesn't matter. 1,200 Marines here. <laughs> I'm just one guy. This doesn't matter. If I had given up that day, a lot of other people would have stayed there and died with me. Check this out. In your life, whether you want to believe it or acknowledge it or not, you have the same power. How you live, the decisions you make, the things you say and do 
have a profound impact perhaps on those you've never met. But they can be the difference, the nudge that pushes someone to the left or to the right, that influences them for good or for bad. We can influence others, how important that is. And when I begin to think about my life in terms of influence, I can influence my kids. I can influence the neighbor kids who see me get up and do some of the same things, working hard and trying to be consistent in my life. They watch that happen. I can influence them. People at work, people in my community, people in my church, I can influence them, not necessarily by the things I say, but by the way I live, the things I do. That motivates me to push forward. Why should I overcome? Why should I push past an obstacle? Well, in part, because there are some people that need to learn how to overcome the obstacles in their own lives. It's powerful in the lives of others. As I mentioned, it can be powerful in our own lives as it motivates us to do things we may not do otherwise without the right accountability. (laughs) You know what else? It's powerful in the lives of those we may never know. Again, so many stories that we could give for time. I won't break all of that out, but we all know people who talk about a grandparent or a great-grandparent or a great-great-grandparent who made a decision that then impacted generations of that family. The influence of your life can extend well beyond your last breath on this earth for better or for worse. Why is it that typically people who are successful in life come from successful families? Not always the case, I know that, but often that is the case. Why? Because of the influence of those who have gone before them. Why is it that so often those who struggle, struggle economically or struggle in some other way, Perhaps uh, they're laden down or burdened with relationship issues, never quite getting it right. Why often, not always, but often do those folks come from families that have the exact same struggles? It's the power of influence. Someone needs to influence the right direction. You see, influence, it shows the way forward. I'm going to show you the direction. So many people lack courage, not because... They are not courageous, but because they just don't know what to do. They need someone to show them the way. Those in our lives uh, need to experience an influence that at least communicates what is possible. Maybe you come from that broken home, that broken situation, an economically difficult situation, uh, but you can influence others positively. You can influence those around you by showing them what is possible if you'll work hard and apply yourself and take advantage of every opportunity that you have. Perhaps you need to deal with an obstacle in your life, a difficulty in your life, to show your kids what's possible. Because one day they're going to end up there too. It shows what is possible. I think influence is very powerful because it gives hope. We all know what it's like to watch someone else do something that we didn't think was possible and then step back and look at our own lives and conclude that if they could do that, maybe my situation is not as hopeless as I once thought it was. There's hope. There is great power in influence. Influence is a thing. It's real. How you live, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, influences others. Maybe it influences large numbers of people. Maybe it's small numbers of people. Maybe it's only people that you've met. Maybe it's a lot of people you haven't met. It always has an impact. Your life will influence others. Will it influence them for good or for bad? You say, well, the way people live is up to them. That's not my responsibility. Isn't it crazy that in our culture we 
shy away from, push away from, run away from, in many cases, personal responsibility. I'm not saying you're responsible for the decisions of others. But you are responsible for stewarding the life that you have in a way that can inspire and influence people that are on the sidelines watching you deal with whatever it is you're dealing with and knowing that somehow in their own lives they will be filled with courage or lose it, given hope or have that hope taken away, motivated forward, or motivated and encouraged to stay where they are because of the decision that you made. There is power and influence, and if we'll put our hands on that and hang on tight, it will motivate us forward, it will help those who are coming up behind us, and it will potentially impact people we'll never meet. Influence is powerful. I hope that's an encouraging thought to you. Uh, beyond even being encouraging, and I hope it is encouraging, but I hope it encourages you to do something. I hope it's a motivating thought to you. Stand up. Work hard. <laughs> Influence others. Make it happen. And I believe that in doing so, God will use you for the purpose for which you were created. Thank you again for listening, and I'll remind you one more time, if you're listening, go ahead and subscribe wherever it is you're listening from. But take some time. Go over to YouTube. You can find me on YouTube. Search for my name, Jeremy Stonlecker. You can find this channel. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell, and uh, I'd love to connect with you there. You can also find me on jeremystonlecker.com. Thank you again. Look forward to talking to you next week. And as we leave, I will remind you, as I do every single week, in life, when the bullets are flying, <laughs> when the bombs are falling, when it seems like your world is falling apart, you only have two choices. You can stay where you are and die, or you can put one foot in front of the other and march. What are you going to do? Thank you. I'll talk to you next week.